Hey everyone, it's Justine. Welcome to a new video. This is from a viewer request to check out my card process, how I go about creating, not just seeing the final edited product, but actually where I go in my craft room, how I create and how I pick things. So I'm going to show you first a time lapse of me doing it and then I'm going to put myself into a bit of a slow motion here as I explain my process and how I go about actually creating a card. So the time lapse is super fun, let me show you it. I hope that was kind of fun to watch and now I'm going to go into a little bit more detail as to how I actually go about creating a card. So generally I start off by cutting myself some card panels so I can go ahead and get started creating right away. I cut several that are four by five and a quarter and I leave any leftovers for the next time I craft. Now sometimes I do have a big stack of these ready to go and sometimes I don't so I needed to do that today. The next thing I do is I go and I grab a bin from my top shelf that has all the products that I am intending to use in my future videos. So today I'm going to create one with Birch Press. So I've gone ahead and I've grabbed all the dies that they had sent me for my design team work. And I also went and grabbed the stamp sets that I have in my stash from Birch Press in case I want to use them. Now once I've taken a good look at the stamps and the dies, I generally try and think of a technique or something that I want to do with them. So I went ahead over to my paper area and I thought I'd pick out the paper for my layers, the colored papers. And I went ahead and I picked a, a satin purple, a satin pinkish color, and satin silver from Tonic Studios. These are some of my favorites to cut layers with. They're shiny and they're metallic. Then I stopped and had a quick chat with my sister who popped into my craft room to say hi. I then went ahead and I used the paper to go ahead and choose all my embellishments and other things that I could have used. So I went to my sequin drawer and I pulled some sequins that I may want to add to my card. I then decided from those sequins that I wanted to go ahead and add a shaker card. So I grabbed some 3D foam tape, some glue, and then I went ahead and added a couple of more sequins to my stash that may match my cards. I also went ahead and grabbed some heat resistant acetate because of course I'm going to need that for my card. And I generally open up most of my drawers in my Alex drawer to here to see what kind of colors I have and I bring everything that's a similar color with me to my table. So I grabbed some shimmer powder in a similar colors to the paper, some watercolor, and as well as those sequins. So what you're really going to notice as I'm going through my creating process and I'm creating my card, other than the puppy running around, is that I don't have to get up very much once I have all of those supplies. So they're already ready here for me. Another thing that's important to me is to not have a ton of waste. So what I decided to do was grab my cardstock and cut it down to a similar size as the die itself. So I made four by four cuts in my trimmer so it would make it easy to put through my die cutting machine and no waste would be there and I would have still very large full sheets of cardstock left over. So I went ahead and die cut and you can see that my Gemini Junior die cutting machine is just off to the right. Again, no getting up to go die cutting because I find if I have to get up and move around then I I probably won't do it or I'll avoid it subconsciously I like to hope I hope I'm not really that lazy anyway I die cut those there and then you can see here that I'm going to take them out and this is a pretty thick uh, paper and what I noticed as well as my cutting pads are getting to be a little bit on the warped side so I had to run this one through again because it didn't cut very well. These are things that I would typically edit out of my video just because it really isn't the product fault, it's just more my supply fault. So I have everything within arm's length. If you've checked out my Kanmari organization craft tour, you'll know this. And I so I have tweezers right there. I have my black ink pad, my favorite set of inks. I have scissors on hand. I have all the typical things. The only thing I always bring to my desk extra is my paper trimmer and my misty. And I also thought about getting a little shelf for my desk where I can put those in. 
So I'm popping out everything here. And as I said, I don't care for waste very much. So I am actually going to be using the majority of those pieces that I'm getting out of the die. And I like to keep everything like little piecewise in a little jar. And I'm going to use those for the shaker bits in my card. So normally and typically I would edit certain parts of this out because it did take me a little while to pop out these pieces. And normally with the Gemini Junior, I don't have that issue and I've never had that issue before. But as I said, my plates are a bit warped at the moment. So I would normally edit that out so people didn't see that particular part. And I don't think anybody would stick around a video that took so long for me to do that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, throw all of those little pieces into a jar. As I had mentioned, I always have a little watercolor bowl here for water if I need it. And I'm going to go ahead and start constructing my shaker card, which required a little bit more die cutting on my white card panel here so I could have everything ready to go. I added my heat resistant acetate and I realized that one of my glue was clogged. So I went ahead and add, grabbed a different type of glue. Again, something I would normally edit out of my video as you're seeing here, the raw footage. So when I go about my card, this is what I do. I grab a stamp or a die, I think of a technique I want to do, I go grab those supplies, I come back to my desk and I create. It's not too often I have to get up again, but sometimes I do change my mind halfway through and it doesn't necessarily mean as well that I'm going to use all those supplies. I didn't end up using the shimmer powder. I thought that these dyes were perfectly fine as a focal point themselves and I didn't need to add any color to the background itself. So now I'm just finishing the, or putting the last finishing touches on my card and I'm just doing some stamping. And I like to keep over on the side of my desk is my bed. So I'll keep my paper trimmer there, my misty there, and then any other big supplies that I have to get them off my desk. I can't recommend the tonic glass mat enough just because I absolutely love it for the fact that nothing gets on my mat. You can see that my glue, it, nothing rolls onto it because it's elevated, if that makes sense. And so I keep everything sort of around the glass mat. So my area stays clear and especially important for filming. And I don't get my area overwhelmed with supplies. So this definitely helps a lot and I, with my organization, I personally find. When I am all done, it is also super important for me to put everything away. It doesn't matter if I'm going to create another card, I will put everything away at this point. If you are a card maker that is a blogger or a video maker, this is, I often go ahead and import my supply list into Link Deli before I start cleaning up or as I'm cleaning up. So as I put away each supply, I will link it into Link Deli so I don't forget any when I go ahead and actually create my video. I will often take little pieces like like maybe leftover paper, the dyes themselves to use as props in my photography, but today just wasn't those day, that kind of day. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look into my card making process. Do what works for you, that's my best advice. This is the method that has worked for me for years and that I've been using. Thanks so much everyone for watching another sort of different style of video. Bye now.